And I don't know where you've been, but you're gonna respect this courtroom. My life has proven that it's not about where you come from, it's about where you're going. From a jailed youth who had my record expunged to becoming the youngest judge elected. The Honorable Judge Greg Mathis presiding. In just 15 years. Ma'am, let me know when you want to go to rehab. Otherwise, I think you're a crackhead. Absolutely not. My goal is to inspire others to overcome their obstacles. You don't need him and his little raggedy roommate. Thank you. All while having a little fun on Mathis Court. You look like you're ready to lie right the first <laughs> word out your mouth. <laughs> this is Mathis Court with Judge Mathis. Eric Price is suing Stephen Mills in the amount of $300. All rise. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Greg Mathis presiding. May be seated. Mr. Price claims he rented a limo for his birthday bash and says the night was ruined when Mr. Mills brought his girlfriend along without asking. State your name. My name is Eric Price. I'm Stephen Mills, Your Honor. All right, and sir, you're suing your friend for $300, alleging he owes you this money for limousine fees? Yes, I am. Start with you. Yeah, so it was my 25th birthday, and I decided to rent a limousine for me and my boys. And I had the limousine go to his place first, pick him up, and then meet us at our place while we were all waiting for him. So the limo pulls up, and the driver opens the door for me, and I look inside, and to my surprise, his girlfriend is there, Cece. Um, she was not invited. I'm not a fan of Cece. Um, but it's my birthday, and I don't want to cause any drama, so I go. That's why he brought it. He didn't want any drama at home. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. Some folks and some <laughs> men or women, I got to keep it uh, balanced, uh, won't let their partner go anywhere without them or give them hell if they try to, particularly if they're going with their buddies. They don't like it. His woman is <laughs> with it, went one step further than not liking it and being <laughs> suspicious. She said she was going to block it. Whatever y'all going to do, she's going to be right there. She ain't even his wife, is she? Not yet. His girlfriend. They've been only been for a year, you know? He came. It's like a year and a half. He didn't give me any warning. It was a boys' night out, and I got to look inside the limo, which there I you go. organized. You should have given him a warning, sir. You should have said, my woman wants to come. Is that all right? He just said, H-E-L-L, no. <laughs> and then you would have had the, you would have tried to explain to her, and if she's and she wasn't going for it, then you couldn't go, period. Yeah, no, Your Honor, you're 100% correct. But, um, you know, through our college days and till up until this night, we would do something called NGA, and you'd throw that in the group text. No girls allowed. That's how we knew it was a guy's night. There was no kind of preface to that. No, you know, pre-context of, hey, no girls are allowed. It's just the boys. You just sent us some information. I was bringing my girlfriend along who, you know, we were going quite strongly at the time, not anymore. Why, honestly, why, I, why not? Well, honestly, because of this. No, oh, it wasn't because of this. You, you took an absolute that rift into You this. took her. So what does she have a beef for if she went? Well, you know what? She's the type of person, Cece's her name, who wants everyone to like her. And he's made it blatantly obvious that he does not like Cece. And so she leaves you for him? I mean, because of him? I didn't help. Didn't help, Your Honor. I mean, She orders you around. She, got, she treats you like a chump already. Okay, she should have just right. told him not <laughs> right. to be your friend anymore. Yeah, well, you, you know, can't, so, she, you can't go out. So next step, just go with the next step. Sometimes okay, like, it's, I can't be his friend. Okay, okay. <laughs> I can't go on the limo. Uh, uh. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, you know, sometimes it's nice to get bossed around a little bit. Just saying. Depending on the just circumstance. Saying. Depending on the circumstance, and I was okay with it this night. Look, I respected the fact that she was there. I didn't make a big deal out of it. I didn't say anything. But later in the night, I took them to some dive bars that you know we like to go to on our own. And we got there, the second we got there, she's complaining, she's saying it's dirty, she knows better bars, and I'm out here being like, it's my birthday, it's my birthday. What is she's this? Now she's trying to call shots with the crew. <laughs> Thank Not you. Not only is she going to go with the crew, now she wants to call shots. It was the whole night, nonstop. You embarrassed the man. Ah, oh, come on. I mean, yes, she's opinionated. Why did y'all break up? Well, we're on and off, Your Honor. You know, uh, we're... Kind of she tells you when you're on and off. <laughs> Come here, you're my boyfriend this week. Okay. <laughs> Get on out, I'm done. Give me a couple weeks off. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, it's, it's a multitude of things, but I don't think that this little rift in our, um, you know, in our relationship has helped things. He kind of, uh, kind of made it very apparent that 
he doesn't think that she's the one for me. And I think that's because of some underlying circumstances. Why? Um, I mean, to be fair, we've known each other since we ran track in college and, you know, things were going well. I actually ran. He r watched me run for the most part. No offense. I did hurdles. I was on the I team. Well, yeah, you practiced with yeah, At least his woman don't follow him around everywhere he goes. <laughs> yeah, that's, okay, that's fair, Your Honor. I <laughs> can't really say much against that. Coming up on Mathis Court with Judge Mathis. Hey, handsome guy. Thank you, Your Honor. So are you. you got his... Hair late, and I don't mind him calling me handsome. I don't care Absolutely. if a man compliments me, compliment me all he wants. Absolutely, yeah. If he try to act like he wants to hit on me, I say, no, I'm heterosexual, so no thank you, and that's it. And later. I came home to find that everything was gone, including one of our pets, uh, that I was left alone with nothing. If you'll be in the Los Angeles area and want to bring your case to court, call 1-888-552-6870. You're watching Mathis Court with Judge Mathis. This is Mathis Court with Judge Mathis. Mathis Court is back with the case of Eric Price, who is suing Stephen Mills for the cost of a limo. So I, uh... I think the underlying issue might be that Eric had a little bit of a crush on me back in the day. Your Honor, that's not true. Okay, you gay? Yes. All right. But he's not my type. He <laughs> handsome guy. Thank you, Your Honor. So are you. you got his hair laid, and I don't <laughs> mind him calling me handsome. I don't Absolutely. care if a man compliments me, compliment me all he wants. Absolutely, yeah. If he try to act like he wants to hit on me, I say, no, I'm heterosexual, so no thank you, and that's it. Now, if you push, <laughs> if you push, then I'm going to tear you off. So, you think he was lightweight hidden on you back in the day? I, yeah, lightweight's one way to say it. I mean, definitely gave me the googly eyes now and then and yeah. gave me some up and downs. You were just paranoid just because you knew the man was gay. But the good news is you all maintain your friendship. Well, and that's what I'm glad to hear, that that didn't run you off. So, kudos to well. you. Absolutely. And I want to tell all you other homophobic men that every man that's gay doesn't want you. He's just like a heterosexual. He got a woman. He's attracted to a particular person, a particular man, not every man. So don't you worry about running, walking up and down. I went to a gay club with my brother. My brother was gay, and that's why it's kind of normalized for me. And I'm an advocate, and my son is gay. I went to a club with my brother. when I guess I was about 20, and, man, I had the best time in the world. Hold on, I mean, they, your other son. <laughs> Whatever. It's Greg, yes, my other son. But anyhow, uh, man, they were jumping up and down and that electronic music. This was back during the late set, right after disco. I will survive. I mean, they were just jumping and having fun. I go to the straight club, all the guy, everybody trying to be cool. We know the woman party. separated, they don't want to talk to you. The guy sitting up there. I said, like, Steve, take me back to the game club. <laughs> he said, no, nah, they might, no, nah, they might get the wrong impression. You come here too much. So, uh, don't, uh, nobody should be uh, intimidated unless you got some deep-seated feelings that you don't want to come out. All right, so, once again, kudos to you. You might have thought that and whatever the case, but you maintain your close friendship. All right, and tell me about the $300, I guess, with the limo ride. Yeah, so after the bars, we go to a concert, and at the concert, she's still complaining, giving us a hard time at a friend's concert, and after that, we go to this after party, um, and we're in the limo on the way over there, and she's banging on the window, asking for liquor. She wants to stop at a liquor store, and then she threw up in the limo, and finally, we get to the after party, and she doesn't have her ID, and she's yelling at the security guard who's not letting her in because she doesn't have her ID. And at this point, she's being rude, she's too drunk, I decide she's got to go home. Um, and I've asked him a few times, like I've told him, she should go home, and he keeps saying she's fine. At this point, that's the line. So um, he wants to put her in a taxi home by herself, but I insist, I'm like, she can't go home by herself, that's dangerous, you know? She's, yeah, so we all get in the limo together, and we got to go 40 minutes back to her house, and by the time we get back to her house, she's lost her key, and they take 20 minutes arguing, trying to find her key. And finally, they figure it out. They get back, and he gets back in the limo. Uh, and it's another 40 minutes back to the after party. So at this point, it's almost midnight. It's another two hours in the limo. 
Um, at the rest of the night, it's a great time. And we have a Sir, great time at the after what do you party. say to this? They extended the time of the limo to accommodate the problems that your woman was having, and you brought her against the uh, will of the other folks, and it caused a disruption. Yeah. And and an ex extra expense. What do you say to that? Well, uh, what I say is I think his perspective the night's a little bit skewed. I mean, she was not a problem at all. Cece's the life of the party. She's an she didn't have to person. go home before. I don't think she needed to go home. No, she was completely fine. Judge, I mean, we've all had those nights where we go out and, you know, honestly, in, back in college, we used to call it a puke and rally. You throw up, you feel better immediately, you keep going. And she threw up? She threw up a little like bit, Neil, a little baby spit. You did right to take it her right home. It was really nothing. Like, yeah. just a small baby she was, spit. She was and gonna hit that and by the girl. way, I'm the finish with these homophobes. Yeah, I called him handsome. And so I know you homophobes were, the judge in there call another man handsome. My son is handsome. Nah, I can't do that either. He handsome. Thank you. It's a, good look, yeah. it's a good looking guy. Yeah, we're allowed to say, it, Your Honor. There you go. Yeah. I just yeah. wanted to clear. Yeah. I wanted to keep that. Yeah. And you, I didn't like your, when I said my son is gay, you had to distinguish. You just but, you wanted know. the women to know that you're yeah, eligible. Yeah. You said uh, my son. I got you. Know. I know you wanted to know, to pronounce your eligibility. All of us are being politically incorrect because a lot of stuff. Uh, we don't know that offends people. We're learning that it offends people. But as you learn, understand. And don't you judge what should offend them. If it offends them, they believe it offends them, that's good enough. All right, judgment for the plaintiff, $300. And I should get a, a degree because I did a lot of educating today. All right, <laughs> have a good day. Judge Mathis has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant has been ordered to pay $300. Trash has been served. Well, yeah. Taking that I mean, $300 now. Guess it has. And I miss you, man. Let's go back to being friends. All right, if, if you're big enough for it, um, I don't know. I don't Absolutely. know if I can move on from this one. You're welcome anytime. Head this way. Coming up. It started like a bottle of wine in the morning, a bottle in the afternoon. A couple weeks in, was adding some hard liquor in that. Uh, anyway, I left for my personal safety and mental health. You're watching Mathis Court with Judge Mathis. This is Mathis Court with Judge Mathis. Justin Cantor is suing Bryn Scott in the amount of $6,000. Mr. Cantor claims his girlfriend abruptly moved out of their apartment and says he was stuck paying the defendant's share of the rent for four months. State your name? Justin Cantor. Ma'am? Bryn Scott. Sir, you are suing Miss Scott for $6,000 alleging your ex-girlfriend owes you this because she left without telling you with all the bills when she moved out. Start with you. Uh, your Honor, I'm suing my ex. Um, we were living together for two years and after uh, my bar got closed down in Hollywood, I was left with four months of rent to pay on my own when she left inextricably, leaving me to handle all of the rent, all of the utilities, and also took at one of our pets. At the bar or at the residence, sir? At the residence, sir. Okay, I didn't hear anything about that. You say when your bar was closed down in Hollywood. How long had you all been living together? Uh, we were two years together. Now let's talk Honor. about that. How much was the rent? Uh, it was uh, $1,500 for each of us. Uh, it wasn't until uh, one night I came home to find that everything was gone, including one of our pets, uh, that I was left oh, alone wow. with nothing. What's, what's so bad about him that everybody shut on, down on him so quick? Uh, well, Your Honor, the pandemic, of course, was hard on everybody. Um, he began drinking more than he had before the pandemic. Of course, he owns a bar, so I know that that's kind of part of what he does. But it started like a bottle of wine in the morning, a bottle in the afternoon. A couple weeks in, was adding some hard liquor in that. Uh, anyway, I left for my personal safety and mental health. As the months went on through the pandemic, I didn't feel safe. Coming up. He was drunk, wanted to stay, keep drinking. I wanted to go back to the hotel room, which I did. When, we, when he got back to the room, he said I was being an idiot, first didn't want to stay and didn't want to have fun. I was boring. You're watching Mathis Court with Judge Mathis. This is Mathis Court with Judge Mathis. 
Mathis Court is back with the case of Justin Cantor, who is suing Bryn Scott for unpaid rent. Why didn't you feel safe? Mm, the week before I left, he was drunk and got in my face and started screaming and I felt like the next step was gonna be physical violence. I went into the room. Luckily, he went onto the couch and passed out. And from that moment, I started looking for a place. I had my own job. I saved money. I just found the first you thing I could. You all worked together for two years. You lived together for two years. Any other arguments? Yeah, just. How often? Before the pandemic, maybe once a month. Once a month, you all argue. One time we went out of town and we were at a bar at the hotel we were staying at. At the bar. And, and he was drunk, wanted to stay, keep drinking. I wanted to go back to the hotel room, which I did. When, we, when he got back to the room, he said I was being an idiot, First, didn't want to stay and didn't want to have fun. I was boring. We screamed. He passed out. That didn't happen again for until the pandemic when his drinking Okay, so really he had bad. a history of arguing once a month over the two years that you all lived together. This is by your own admission. And what you describe he did to cause you to leave, he had done it before. When he got in my face and was physically like an inch from me, it, it was the scariest. That's what you described the first time, too. The, the first time wasn't, it wasn't, it was just a yelling match. How far match. was he when he screamed? Maybe the other side of the bed. Okay. And, sir, what do you say to that? Uh, Your Honor, I'd like to bring up the fact that she, the, in the example that Ms. Scott gave that she brought up an example where I was drinking, we had more arguments than just arguments about me being at the bar, wanting to drink and have fun. We had all the normal arguments a couple has. Uh, things about, you know, where to go for lunch. You know, what are we going to do with the dogs? How will Judge Mathis rule? Find out when Mathis Court returns. You're watching Mathis Court with Judge Mathis. This is Mathis Court with Judge Mathis. When you came home and called her, what did she say? Or whenever you reached out and contacted her, what did she tell you? The first thing, well, I was obviously worried for her safety. Mm -hmm. That was the first thing I thought of. So I was calling her nonstop, and it was eventually a text message I got from her telling me she wanted nothing to do with me and she wanted no contact. I also have a copy of the text message here, Your Honor. Okay, and you, you knew why? Um, I... Not initially, but she made that very clear soon after. All right, let me see the text message you want me to see. I will make sure you regret this. Who said that? That was him. Exactly. I didn't want him to know where I'd gone well, to. That's the end of that case. <laughs> you threatened her. Have a good day. Yeah, no, you're on. Claim dismissed. Yeah, you said, I'll make sure you regret this. Bye bye. Yeah, yeah. Have a good day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't tell anyone that. Judge Mathis has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff's claim has been dismissed. I just hope you're getting the help you need and that we never have to see each other again. I also hope we never get to see each other again. This has been a production of Allen Media Group.